Gentleman yields back his time. Uh, the uh, member, Ms. Lee, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Delivery for America plan, particularly the part uh, about the consolidation of sorting and delivery centers, is intended to improve postal performance and finances. These changes will most certainly have major effects on all our local communities and postal workers have raised concerns about those impacts. But are those concerns being heard by leadership? Section 301 of the Postal Accountability and Enhancement Act requires the Postal Service to engage and share data with these communities and stakeholders prior to implementing a realignment or consolidation plan. Mr. DeJoy, how did the Postal Service comply with this community engagement requirement prior to the release of the DFA, particularly about the restructuring of the facilities? Uh, we made the determination that we complied with every aspect of, of the, the law and regulations with regard to the plan as we roll it out. The plan was ideas, uh, and as we move forward, we communicate. Uh, we've had, I, I can't tell you the amount of communications that we've had with the Congress, with other, other stakeholders. Uh, um, so, uh, so far, we're, we feel very comfortable in terms of what we did. In fact, the Postal Regulatory Commission recently opened a formal public inquiry into the Delivery for America plan to get more transparency and learn more about the impact on the postal community. Yet the Postal Service recently filed an objection to this inquiry uh, and requested it be withdrawn. Mr. DeJoy, why is the Postal Service objecting to this inquiry meant to make sure you actually engage with your stakeholders and customers? We, we, we engage with our stakeholders. We feel it's our position that the Postal Regulatory Commission has overstepped uh, uh, their authority, and we're an independent organization, and we, have, we are charged with the mission of saving the organization, not the Postal Regulatory Commission. Postal Regulatory Commission sat over and watched the destruction of the organization over the last 15 years, and par actively participated in the destruction of the organization over the last 15 years. What we're trying to do is save the organization. They, I, what goes on and why they do the things they do, I am yet to figure out. And I'm a pretty smart guy. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, if your objection is dismissed, uh, will you commit to participating in stakeholder forums and pledge not to take any further steps to block or delay such a forum? I, 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 I didn't feel the full question, but I am, we have communicated extensively and will communicate extensively uh, uh, to all, all stakeholders with regard to the reasonable amount of description one can give and taking on and doing a massive you know, change that is done. At the end of the day, we're not affecting service. We're not gonna affect service. Service will continue. Service is better now. And it's because of the things that we've done within the plan. We will reach all 165 million addresses we're supposed to do. We'll meet the service requirements and, and, and so forth. We just have to fix the chaos that exists within the neck that is established over the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. You've touted that the DFA has already reduced projected losses for the decade by more than half, yet the Postal Service has already lost $2.1 billion in 2023. That's 75% more than expected by this point. How do you explain this complete contradiction in numbers? Uh, so a couple of ways. Number one, in our plan, three, uh, uh, there's $3 billion in this, this year's budget. Uh, full year, the three billion dollars of uh, CSRS reform that was planned that we have not, it's, it's an administrative order that we're expecting to, that we, we are uh, uh, advocating to get. Uh, that has not happened. Uh, we had almost two billion dollars in inflation, which was not, uh, 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 not, not expected, it, it, uh, in excess of our projected inflation. The way we, uh, we, we, we bill in, in the future, we incur the cost currently. Uh, and then there were, uh, uh, there, there were additional costs that uh, I kept in place so as we transitioned, we didn't inf in impact service. And that was, that's going to be about another billion and a half dollars. Uh, so uh, we're not giving up on the, on the long term. It was a big task. The place a little more broke than we figured out when I, in the first five months of being here. But we're very, very committed to getting this back on track and, yeah. and moving forward. And that's why interference from the Postal Regulatory Commission is not helpful. It is going to put this whole plan in jeopardy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your comments. I wanted to talk about electrifying the efforts to electrify, fly, uh, electrify the fleets, but uh, with time in mind, I'll close that and say this: the Postal Service delivers 
for the nation every day. To be effective at this essential mission, it needs to get feedback from its customers and stakeholders at every possible juncture. Cutting corners to save time or money often has long-term harmful effects, like erosion of trust and loss of customers. It's baffling to me that such a cornerstone of our society has become so politicized and controversial. The Postal Service needs to improve transparency and do better for the American people. Uh, thank you, I yield back. The gentleman yields.